This lecture covers some of the main topics in Chapter 7. Remember that all chapter lectures are not inclusive. I still expect you to read the textbook and go through the chapter objectives. So just to remind you a little bit about membranes, hopefully you remember about the phospholipid bilayer, which we draw as round polar heads. And the polar head means it's hydrophilic, which is water loving. Polar also means it has some kind of charge or partial charge. So there is water on either side of this membrane. And this membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer. So the phospho part we talk about as the polar head. The lipid part is here in the middle. It is hydrophobic tails made up of fatty acids. We'll talk about these more in just a little bit. Phospholipid bilayer means it's two layers. One, two. And we also refer to these layers as leaflets. Okay, so it's two leaflets that can actually be split um, using a technique called freeze fracture. So the techniques for chapter seven you will find in a different set of lecture videos. Membranes are important as they make a barrier separating the outside of a cell from the inside of a cell. We're going to talk about some of the functions of membranes, but remember that membranes are the same whether they are prokaryotic membrane, a eukaryotic membrane, a cell or plasma membrane, an organelle membrane. They're made up of the same general components which is a phospholipid bilayer and proteins. We'll talk some more about the specific types of lipids that can affect membrane composition and we'll talk about um, proteins that are associated with membranes. But in general, a membrane is a membrane, phospholipid bilayer with proteins no matter what type of membrane you're looking at. So your book starts with five main functions of membranes. So the first one is that these are boundaries. Like I said, this can be the boundary of a cell, the boundary of an organelle. So sometimes we think of these as like a Ziploc bag, right? So you can keep things inside a Ziploc bag away from the external environment. And that's kind of how a membrane works. Though membranes are not um, solid like a Ziploc bag. So membranes are actually semi-permeable. And in chapter eight, we will talk more about this idea of semi-permeable, but semi just means kinda, and permeable means things can cross that membrane. So such as gases, water, some small nonpolar molecules, those can move across a phospholipid bilayer, right? But phospholipid bilayers can also transport molecules across. Again, whether it's prokaryotic, eukaryotic, or a membrane for an organelle. And this is where the term selective permeability 
comes into play. So selective means the membrane can control what is crossing. And this is really the focus of chapter eight. So permeable means things can move across. Selective means it can control. Semi does not refer to control, okay? That's just totally based on the components of the membrane. Membranes are also sites of specific functions. Okay. And we're going to talk about lipid rafts or microdomains in just a little bit. So for instance, in the mitochondrial inner membrane, there are a series of proteins that are lined up for the electron transport chain. Okay, so that's a function of the membrane, is to hold them all together in that specific location so that they can work kind of like an assembly line. Membrane functions include receptors. Oops, missed a lot. Okay, so receptors are proteins primarily that receive information from the outside and can bring information to the inside of the cell. So our last unit in we'll talk about signal transduction and we'll talk a lot about receptors. So this is part of cell communication. And signal transduction. Okay. Oops. Okay, membranes can also be important in cell to cell contact. And this is really important for those of us who are multicellular. So cell to cell contact allows cells to communicate and adhere to each other and make tissues. Okay, it allows cells to um, contract at the same time, such as the muscles in cells in your heart. So cell-cell contact, we will talk a lot about in the third unit and talk about um, how cells have tight junctions and gap junctions and hemidesmosomes and desmosomes and adherens and are able to stick together again in order to form an organized structure. This semester we are going to focus mainly on animal cells and remember that animal and plant are eukaryotes which means they have a membrane bound nucleus and they have membrane bound organelles. Bacterium are your prokaryotes. These are the focus of much of microbiology class. But what I want you to remember is that prokaryotes can do many of the same functions that eukaryotes, right? They replicate DNA, they grow and divide, they make proteins. Some prokaryotes do cellular respiration. There are some prokaryotes that do a form of photosynthesis. So just because they are small and many people call them simple doesn't mean they don't perform the same functions as these eukaryotes. These eukaryotes though can be much larger because they have these membrane bound organelles. So an organelle means something little with a specific function like a large organ like your liver has a specific function. 
So your mitochondria, primarily there to make ATP. Your Golgi is there to process proteins and ship them off to their correct destinations. Because of these membrane bound, because of these membrane bound organelles, eukaryotes can be much bigger because they can concentrate functions into these different organelles. Whereas in bacteria, they have to do it all in a single cell. All right, we're gonna pause there because my pen has decided to stop working.